say I'm an artist, because I don't know, I feel weird about that. I usually say I build blocks of colour, and then I say I'm an artist, because they look at you weirdly. This process, it's part of a construction process. So when you go to temples or grand palaces or whatever it is in Rajasthan, which is where this process that I now do comes from, you'll be walking on it. It will be the floor or the wall or the pillars. So it's not something that is put up on a wall for you to be focused on. It's not an art form there. It's a part of a building process. So my eye was drawn to the surface and thinking, what is this? And then eventually um, I found out, in fact through some British Council people, that there was a particular fresco process and that there was an old chap who was teaching various different types of fresco painting. I made it my business to go and find this guy and um, asked him whether it would be okay for me to come back and work with him. Yeah, I needed to do the real thing. I needed to actually build bits of wall. It was no good trying to kind of create that effect in mm. some way using some different medium. So the British Council and the Commonwealth Scholarship together um, provided funding for people who wanted to go to India. I went back to Baroda, which is in Gujarat in Western India, um, because that's where this man was based, um, to work with him for about two and a half years. I met him in, um, I think it was 87, 88, and I worked with him until he died, which I think was 2001, something like that. Um, and I still make mistakes. It's difficult, you know, have to really, you have to get a feel for the materials. It's very delicate work, it takes a long time. And uh, I don't know what it is about me, you know, obsessive, I don't know what. I have a passion for India too, so it was a connection. It hit the spot for me, but I don't know how many people it will hit the spot for. It takes that particular set of ingredients to, to, uh, to galvanise somebody to come and sit in my studio and learn with me for 12 years to do it. And the master craftsman in India, it, it's, um, there are people there who could teach people still, there are some people there, but there just aren't the people who'd want to learn, I don't think. Actually, it's an incredibly labour-intensive process, absurdly labour-intensive, particularly now, 2007, we live in a virtual world, you know, this is very hands-on, incredibly physical, um, nothing exists until you build it, grind it, the men who I work with in um, Bombay, they'd have children, but their children aren't interested in sitting around grinding marble and lime, and they're just not. And it doesn't earn enough money. Previously, the Maharajas used to support this kind of work. They had public works departments, and those used to sponsor and pay for people to work like this. That doesn't exist anymore, that system's dead. So therefore, you need private sponsors, private clients to pay for this. And those are few and far between and not enough to keep this going indefinitely. So it will die out, it will. Yeah.